Hi friends, my name is Miss Jackie and I'd like to welcome you to Bedtime Storytime. Now, you might be wondering, why am I wearing this big bright hat? Well, it has something to do with the lesson today. So, let's do it. This book is called A Hat for Ivan and it's by Max Lucado. Ivan was a happy boy. He lived in Hatville. Everyone in Hatville wore hats. Doctors wore doctor's hats. Cooks wore cooking hats. Farmers wore farming hats. Ivan's father was a hat maker. When people came to his shop to order a hat, Ivan's father would ask, what do you really love to do? I love to fish, one man said. Do you fish well? That I do. Then you need a fishing hat. So Ivan's father made a hat with a pocket for the hooks and a small bucket for the bait. At the age of 10, each boy and girl in Hatville had a hat day. On that big day, they got their very own hats. Ivan's hat day was coming soon. All Ivan could think about was his new hat. He told everyone, my hat day is coming. The people in Hatville were excited about Ivan's hat day, but they had their own ideas about what kind of hat he should wear. Felix, the baker said, Ivan, I have a hat for you. Ivan was surprised. He thought his hat would come from his father, the hat maker, but maybe he was wrong. Ivan didn't want to hurt his friend's feelings. Thank you, Mr. Felix, he said. Go ahead, put it on, said the baker. Ivan did, but it was too big. It fell down over his whole face. That's okay, little friend. It will soon fit. Ivan tripped on the step and fell down. Funny, he said to himself. I thought my hat would fit better than this. Soon, Ivan came to Miss Anito's piano studio. Ivan's father made her a special hat with bells. She loved the hat and she loved Ivan. But when he stopped to hear her play, she didn't know who he was. All she saw was a tall hat on a small boy. Who are you? she asked. Ivan said, It's me, Miss Anita, Ivan. That's not the hat for you, she declared. Then she handed Ivan a very different looking hat. I made this hat just for you. Here, try it on. The hat was covered with musical makers a piccolo, bells, whistles, and a drumstick. Perfect, Miss Anita said as he put it on. Ivan smiled and left the studio. Now he had two hats. He wasn't comfortable wearing either one, but he didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Soon, he met a new problem. Ivan, the big, deep voice belonged to Bruno, the firefighter. Take that silly hat off your head. I know your hat day is near, so I bought you a gift. For the third time that day, a hat was placed on Ivan's head. This hat was just like Bruno's, long and red and very shiny with a piece of fire hose wrapped around it and a tiny ladder on the top. Now, that's what I call a hat, Bruno boomed. 
Ivan stepped back and fell over. The hat was too tall and heavy and he couldn't keep his balance. Bruno helped him up. You'll get used to it, Bruno told him. Ivan tried and tried to stand but kept falling backwards. Thanks, Mr. Bruno, he said. Funny, Ivan thought to himself. It's easy for Bruno to wear this big hat, but it's hard for me. Then with one hand holding the heavy hat on his head and one hand holding the others, he carefully walked the rest of the way to school. At school, Ivan tried wearing one hat after another. He had a hard time wearing all the hats. Ivan, the teacher finally said, maybe you should go home. Ivan knew that she was right. He had too many hats. On the way home, he was given even more. The farmer gave him a straw hat. The beekeeper gave him one with a net. A clown gave him a cone hat. And the bookshop owner gave him a hat shaped like a book. Ivan soon had so many hats that he could hardly carry them all. He kept dropping them. All of a sudden, he saw Felix the baker. Oh no, he thought, I'm wearing the farmer's hat. So he snatched it off and put on the baker's hat. Carrying the hats was hard enough, but now Ivan's eyes were covered and he couldn't see where he was going. Suddenly, he heard tiny bells. It was Miss Anita. Ivan pulled off the baker hat and threw on the musical hat just in time. Oh, you look wonderful, Miss Anita exclaimed as she paused. Ivan had started picking up the rest of the hats when he heard Bruno's deep voice. Ivan, is that you? Quickly, Ivan replaced the musical hat with the firefighter hat. It's me, he said, standing up and then falling back and back until he landed on his bottom. Looks terrific, Bruno called over his shoulder. Thanks, Ivan mumbled. He was so tired he just sat there, surrounded by his hats. Looks like you've had quite a day. Ivan couldn't remember when a voice ever sounded so good. Father, he shouted, jumping up. You won't believe what happened today. Everybody gave me a hat and none of them fit, Ivan's father spoke up. That's right, said the boy. But you don't want to hurt anyone's feelings? Ivan shook his head. That's right, Ivan stopped. How did you know? Ivan's father put his arm around the boy. I'm the hat maker. I've seen what happens when people wear hats that weren't made for them. It was kind of everyone to give you hats. They don't know you. That's my job. I'm the hat maker and I'm your father. Ivan smiled. Father, I want the hat that you will make for me. Well, Let's gather up these hats and go home then. As the hat maker and his child walked home, the father asked, tell me, Ivan, what do you really love to do? The end. This is a pretty wonderful book, huh? It kind of reminds me that I probably should take this hat off. And I'm gonna do something this week that I'd like you to join me in. This week, I'm gonna make my very own hat of things that remind me that God loves me. Now, if you make one, I would love for you to bring it in next Sunday to Sunday School. I can show you my hat and I would love if you showed me yours. Now, I'm so glad that you joined me today and I can't wait to meet you next month and talk about a very noisy Christmas. All right, see you soon.